Hello, I'm Julian Tenney. I'm here with a state of the project update for the Xerti project. So by way of introduction, the Xerti project has been around for some time. We first started writing code in 2004 and made our first open source release in 2006. We started developing Xerti Online Toolkits, the browser-based version of the tools in 2008, and we joined the Imperio Foundation in 2014. So we are a successful and well-established project with large communities of users all over the world, but particularly in the UK and in Northern Europe. I'm joined today um, by some colleagues from the project that are going to talk to you about the specific areas that they've been working on. So Fanning are going to give you some examples of a few of the recent tools that have been developed for creating new types of content. And we're proud as a project to be driven by real world use cases. We work with practitioners to help them develop tools that answer real world um, situations that they, that, that they are finding in their teaching and learning activities. Ron is going to talk to you about accessibility. Accessibility has always been at the forefront of the Xerti developments and we have our own set our own benchmark in terms of wanting to be the very best in breed in terms of the native accessibility that the tools provide. We know that accessibility is a difficult problem for people to resolve and we want people to have as much confidence as possible when they're using Xerti that the materials can be used as easily as possible by as many people as, as, as can be. Uh, Tom is going to talk to you about the standards work that he's doing around LTI and XAPI and this is really exciting. I'm not aware of another tool that has such a comprehensive <coughs> implementation of the standards and it creates some really exciting opportunities for the projects in terms of the very granular data that can be tracked uh, when using the tools and that information, how that can be used to help educators create better content through a greater understanding of how learners are interacting with the materials that they're creating. And Helen will talk to you about the work that she started to do around documentation and testing. So we know that there has been a lot of documentation created in the past and we would like to bring it together into one place and have a consistent format um, and to ensure that it's accurate and up to date and refers to the latest version of the software. And Helen's also starting to help us develop some more robust testing processes so that we can confidently test the code before it's released to make sure that it gets out into the user communities without any issues. So I'm going to hand over to Faye now and she's going to talk through some of the work that she's been doing with the templates. Thanks very much. Thanks, Julian. I am going to show you uh, one of the new page types that will be part of the 3.10 release. And that's a 360 degree image page. Um, so this page um, can be added to, to any project um, with the Xerti Online Toolkit template. Um, and it allows you to create, um, to upload your 360 degree images and create tours through them. Um, so you can just add an image and allow people to, to navigate around them, having a look around, but you can also add hotspots to, to the images. And that's where the, the, the um, most useful part of this page comes in. So I can add hotspots such as this one, which opens up a light box showing a, um, uh, a web page. So here we're showing where this castle is in Google Maps. I can add hotspots that bring up extra information. Uh, so this information is added in Xerti, text and images. And I can also add links that, that take me to other scenes within uh, the page. So I can load another um, 360 image if I click on this hotspot. Um, so it's a really flexible page that allows you to, to create really interactive um, tours um, through your content. And um, you can add hotspots as well, the load, um, call them standalone pages. So this page here is another page within uh, the project. It's a tab navigator page, but I could, uh, for example, have loaded a activity page here. So I have a quiz within my um, 360 tour. And there's loads of flexibility of how you use this. And um, one of the other things we've added is we've noticed that a lot of people are starting to use um, Xerti projects to create escape room style um, projects. So one of the things you can add to the 360 pages are hotspots that are actually locked until you um, perform some kind of action. So they might be locked until you view a particular scene or view the information on another hotspot. Um, 
Or in this example, you'll see this hotspot has a padlock on it. And if I click it, I can only access the information behind that if I enter the correct password. So it, uh, answer this question correctly. And so I submit it, this new area of the tool is now open. Uh, thank you, Faye. Uh, I'm a huge fan of escape rooms, so I'm looking forward to the three tents and to create all kinds of escape rooms with it. <laughs> um, but we have some other new pages as well. Um, for example, the crossword games. Um, it's a crossword puzzle, uh, really simple, and you can find it under the games category. And for example, when I add here um, the right answer and here another answer you can click and type if you want and then i'll go check okay i have one attempt left i can say in the editor how many attempts uh, a participant can do so i will try this one and i try again and now i get the answers and the ones that i have right are green and the others are shown just uh, white so this is a really simple crossword game Another new page is the Timeline Media page. Here, this is a page where you can add uh, uh, images, uh, videos, audio, like podcasts, uh, into a timeline. Um, and then you can go um, through the timeline and you can use this arrow uh, to go to the next page, or you can use the, the, the items in the timeline itself. And um, when I go to the next page, here I see some, uh, uh, some text. Um, I can go, when I click in the timeline, to the next bit. And that's an audio event, uh, a podcast in this case. And I have also a video and uh, images. So I can create a timeline. And it doesn't matter if this is years or in one day, you can also add the time if you want to do this in one day. So really useful to get things in order uh, of time just to present it. Then uh, another new page is the hotspot question. There are a lot of hotspot um, pages in Xerti, but there's no, uh, not one that also have tracking in it. So we added a tracked hotspot question page. In this case, the question is what uh, apes like to eat. Um, uh, I think it's banana. So I have two bananas, but I think they also like uh, apples. And what I'm going to check. And then the, um, the result is that I have two answers right and one wrong. And this will also be in the results page and on the dashboard if you use this. So it is really a nice uh, way to do the hotspot with tracking. You can choose if you have this image um, this big or smaller or bigger. You can all choose that in the editor. And then another page, that's the interactive video page. We'll make it a bit bigger. bigger. You can use uh, videos from Xerti itself or uh, Vimeo or YouTube. You add that into um, the page and you can add interactivities to it and interactivities like um, uh, text pop up or a question or a ZOP, a ZOP project. So you can also add uh, other page types that we have into this project. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about um, Xerti and LTI and XAPI and tracking. So what did we do in the latest version of uh, 30? Um, well, first of all, I misspelled something in this slide. I will correct it later. Uh, one of the problems that we noticed in the, uh, in the current dashboard is that if a learner uh, walked through the dashboard to, through the learning object several times, it was really, really, really difficult to understand what these colors meant. Uh, because we tried to make a kind of a summation of all the attempts, uh, but it was not clear for the uh, teacher uh, uh, how that was done. So what we did is um, you have the possibility now to extend such a row. You can, you can uh, see how it's built up from the diff different sections, and it will also indicate uh, which session it will take for the general line. 
Um, and this enables you uh, as a teacher to get a much better understanding of what the learner has done. Now, one of the other things that we noticed uh, in the previous version is that it's very difficult to get uh, completion tracking. Uh, and certainly when you um, embed Xerti objects, uh, the trigger uh, to stop tracking and to save the state uh, didn't work reliable. So what we did and what will be available in the next version is that you have um, a save session button. And this save session button will only appear if the Xerti object is being tracked. So either uh, as a SCORM object or as an uh, XAPI uh, object, if tracking is enabled, this button will be available and uh, uh, the session will be stored uh, either in, in the SCORM tracking database or in the XAPI database. And when you restart the session, uh, you will also have the possibility <clears throat> to resume the previous session where you left off or to start a new session. Thanks, Tom. Um, okay, so I'm going to just talk about some of the accessibility work we've we've done, um, and many of the community would have been um, focusing on as well because of the uh, the WCAG requirements and so on. So, first of all, a reminder that accessibility has been a focus in Xerti from day one. Um, for those of you that are familiar with the Flash interface, you might re remember this, but that's how it looked like, like way back then. And we had things like the fact that you could add alt text and it would appear in the Flash player, which was kind of unheard of at the time. Um, and this was the the viewer interface of that flash player and and in fact incidentally we used to have people when we moved to html saying it was less accessible because in the flash version you had all these alternative color schemes that you could choose and of course with html it's much easier and we didn't need to build those drop down menus in in the flash interface um so we've had a high level of accessibility from day one and Things like the ability to that is in the HTML interface to switch to an inverted high contrast theme or to a black on yellow theme um, is available within the interface, but also any browser accessibility plugins that a user might use and require will work because it's all native HTML and, and CSS and so on. So lots of options in the authoring interface as well to add alternative text and to configure the size of images. And also all images will open by default in a light box window. So a larger view, make them clearer, and that will work on um, mobile devices as well. So we were asked by a number of people on the forums, did we have a, a centralized accessibility statement? Um, and we had some debate about that. Should we, as a developer of a free and open source tool, need to provide that? Should we provide that and so on? Um, and we realized that actually it would be an advantage for us to do that. But also that every website requires an accessibility statement. So effectively, every individual dirty resource should require an accessibility statement. So we decided to work through the specifications and the requirements, and we created a Xerti specific WCAG 2.1 statement and also a VPAT and also much more. So we included uh, guidance and so on. So we referred to the, the statements and requirements, revisited and reviewed existing accessibility features, documented any known issues and non-compliance. And then we worked through and fixed as many of those before that release that included the statement. And so the, the statement was born, but also that we realized that people would want to and, and effectively need to create their own deri derivative of that statement once they make any changes to what is default functionality in Xerxes. So there's lots of customization, there's lots of opportunities to embed external content from other tools. And so typically then the statement needs to reflect that and that you're not just talking about Xerxes then, you're talking about whatever accessibility those external tools provide. Um, so 
This is a screenshot and linked to the statement. This is what it looks like. But also we've included um, things like the, the VPAT, lots of guidance and also context to that guidance. Uh, and again, you can access this in your own time. And then not only the ability to download, but also instructions on how to download and how to edit and make your own copy of that statement and then link it into your own resources. By way of introduction, I'm Helen Davis and I'm from Swansea University in Wales in the UK. And I've just joined the development team with a, a focus on coordinating the existing documentation and contributing to um, some of the testing. So we know that the project has grown. Um, there are two very large user bases. So we've got um, a user base in the UK and also a rather large user base in the Netherlands and Belgium, as well as other places. So with, ex with the existing documentation then, We've got a wide variety and uh, technology is wonderful when it works, isn't it? Of Dutch and Belgian uh, documentation. So we've got quite a bit um, that we need to collate. And that's my first focus will be to collate what we've got, uh, whether it's technical, whether it's how to, whether it's just end user. I say it's my job, again, as with the others, it's a collaborative effort. A collaborative effort. I'll be coordinating it uh, in the start, but working with the developers and more importantly, the community. So we've got quite a variety. Um, for example, on the Zerti website, we've got a documentation folder with a um, on the downloads page. We've also got a community forum that have got documentation there. So a lot of the community has shared the documentation with us. And I, I want to start by building on the work that Faye and some of the other developers have done um, going back to 2019, where we actually put together what documentation we had. And we'll be looking on building this work and collating the materials in order to create one source of truth. And then following on from, following on from that, I'll be looking at uh, developing a testing plan uh, so that we can achieve consistency when, when everybody tests on a reporting process so that we all, the people who know, know about the bugs, know about features, anything, and we can work on that. So thanks very much for, for tuning in. You've heard from some of my colleagues there about the work that they're doing and um, you, you, you'll see that the project is very much alive and we're very healthy at the moment. It's fair to say that Xerti is used by thousands of teachers who are creating content that reaches millions of learners every year. We are a successful open source project um, and come and find out more about what we're doing at the Open Aperio conference in June. Thank you.